be ready to seize your first opportunity to come into the ring and start grandstanding and hot dogging. Yeah, I can't help it that I look good, smell good, can't dance all night long. When we speak, our voices are heard. We all say, I bring it. Welcome to the wrestling podcast that brings more value than a crown jewel. Uh, yeah, welcome to Malice Smack Talk. We are back. We've been gone. I think we've just been like dumbstruck by all the crazy crap that's been going on in the wrestling world, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I am your host, as always, Masonic Vader, with a slightly longer beard. Uh, joining me is Bearded Master. What's up, everybody? Sorry for the absence. Uh, hope you're tuning in still, and we didn't lose you yet, because we're going to come at you with some straight fire. Fire! And way back in the back there, my freak. I'm here. I punched a hole in my wall after Brock won, but we'll get to that later <laughs> on. So uh, let's have some fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and when you guys are watching a show, feel free to go ahead and vent as well, because I guarantee if you're watching the show, or if you're a wrestling fan, uh, these last uh, this last month has been a crazy crap show pretty much and uh we're gonna dive right into it but before we do we just want to take a second to just give props to our host uh, site malice corp uh that's malice hyphen corp they are all things nerd check them out on the website check out all of our past casts on youtube and also on stitcher and also on uh itunes check us out tomorrow night friday at 8 p.m the main show on us uh, on twitch uh, 8 p.m. Malice hyphen corp. Uh, all things nerd. We got some stuff coming up pretty soon that uh, that's probably going to be in the pipeline. Uh, but bottom line, thank you very much for Malice Corp for letting us uh, do our thing here. Uh, let's get right to it, guys. Um, we had since the last time we've been on, uh, there has been two pay per views. We call them pay per views still, even though they're really not. Uh, we had Evolution followed up by Crown Jewel. Uh, thoughts and process. Thoughts on. Uh, let's start with uh, just a quick overlay of Evolution. What were your thoughts on that bearded master? What? How do you think uh, Evolution went? I thought Evolution was probably the best all around pay per view we've seen all damn year. Um, straight from start to finish. Uh, every match. I think so. Here's the thing: we had so many matches. We had so many things going on. Um, I think the probably the lowest quality match on the entire card, and it wasn't even a, a bad match for the most part, was the tag team match that started off between Trish and Lita and Mickey and Foxy. Uh, but no, other than that, every match was a, was a quality match. There's some matches that could have had some longer time limits on them. Um, Tony Storm talking to you. Um, that was a, that could have been easily been match of the night if they would have given it some quality time. Uh, was completely satisfied with the entire card. Um, glad Becky Lynch showed them who's boss and owned no, that no, show. She's, no, the show that she's, she's the, the man. man. That's the right. Man. Um, yeah, to the point where now Charlotte Flair is second guessing herself. Um, really wish that would have been the main event. But even the main event with Ronda and Nikki, I wasn't I wasn't even disappointed with that match. I actually thought that, that was a pretty pretty decent match. Uh, one, Nikki obviously carried it, and I think to see Nikki back to true form and actually performing the quality she can, um, people may not agree with that, but I think Nikki's a pretty damn good performer. Um, she and she's become one, you know, from where she started to where she is now. She's probably the uh, the one that's probably developed and grown the most out of anybody on that roster, and. You know, to, to watch her offense and to even to go to Ronda's side as far as the way she sold it, you know, some of them, those moves and some of the stuff she was doing. And, get, you know, she was getting her ass beat for the majority of that match, and she sold it for the most part. And it was probably her best match to date. Uh, but overall, completely happy with the match um, from start to finish. There, there wasn't a single moment where I was hoping that something else would happen or, you know, filling them the, the lack of the men on the roster and actually thought it was a, a pretty quality pay-per-view. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. Absolutely. Mind freak. What about you, sir? Same kind of idea. Overall, like it was really entertaining. I mean, we, we said it before many times in this cast, um, all three of us have said it that, you know, like right now where a lot of the good talent is, 
is with on uh, the women's roster with all these uh, these superstars, and then just being able to like showcase them and have like all of them there. Um, it was fantastic. Um, for me though, there was a couple things that I noticed. Like uh, when Nia won the battle royal, I kind of already knew who was going to win the Nikki Ronda fight. Up to up to that point, before that, I could have seen it going either way. But with Nia winning, I was like, it's going to be Ronda. They're going to have the Money in the Bank rematch. Um, and it'll be it'll be interesting, you know, to see where and how it goes. Um, but overall, with all the outcomes, everything that happened, uh, I thought it was fantastic. I enjoyed every second of it. And I can't wait to see the next one. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with both you guys. I I I was blowing the pay per view up from the minute they announced it and everything. I was very excited the fact that WWE was finally giving the women the opportunity they did, and the the lineup the the card they had was just incredible. <laughs> Um, I agree with Bearded Master. If you want to call the weakest match, I would say the first one was. And it was just because of what I've said in the past with other matches that they're trying to do, the nostalgia factor. You can obviously see that Lita and Trish uh, had not been in the ring consistently for a long period of time. Now, granted, I think Trish looked better. Lita looked a little like a little slow in some of the stuff. You know, She looked somewhat a little bit lost in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, to go with that, it wasn't even the two of them that brought the quality of that match down. The the, yeah. the the lack of of Alexa Bliss in that match, and the fact that they had uh, Alicia Fox in there. Yeah. At the end of the day, Alicia yeah. Fox doesn't even hold a torch to either one of those women or any of those women in that match. She is by no. far. I, I mean, look if you look at the entire card, she's probably the the lowest quality wrestler on that entire card from that event. And when you put her in there where she has to go against two people who have wrestled and, you know, have had one match in, you know, X amount of years. Uh, and that match was a Royal Rumble. Uh, and then the fact that Mickey James was essentially carrying that match because uh, she was in there with, with Lita. She was in there with Trish. And then she had to hold her team up on her shoulder because Alicia couldn't do nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Alicia just kind of had dropped the quality of the match down. And not only that, well, th there was a big, you know, we've seen them obviously you know trish and mickey had one of the greatest women's feuds of all time um lita her retirement match was against mickey james you they've, yep. been, they've been talking about evolution since before SummerSlam, and the one yep. match they were showcasing the entire time was lita or trish and alexa bliss great but then the entire then it got turned into a tag team and we didn't hear nothing about that feud Nothing about their history until halfway through that match, which was, I believe, a 12-minute match. So you're looking at six minutes in, and Michael Cole finally gives information into the history of Lita and Mickey, Lita and or Mickey and Trish, and it's like this could have carried this entire card, and you have not touched it once until now. That was a disservice to the entire feud, to that match, and to the storyline. Yeah, and and like I was going on with evolution, uh, with evolution, uh, every match was solid. Uh, I, I like I said, even even with uh, the the happening with Trish and Lita and stuff, it was good to see him in the match, and I, it was even better to see him one more time. But I'm glad WWE let them kind of do their thing and get get out of there. It was nice to see nostalgia for a day or two, and it didn't get dragged on for freaking you know four or five months, kind of like Brock Lesnar showing up once every like two months. Um, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let me let me go a little bit further on this one. I also want to agree on uh, going to the main event, Ronda Rousey versus uh, uh, Bella. I I wasn't. I like that match, man. I I I was kind of nervous with Bella's. Uh, you know, once again, because she just came back into this after a while. Would she have some of that ring rust? And and you you hit it on the head, Marty. Man, she was solid. She carried that match quite well, all the way to a point where she got, like, flipped off the top rope, landed on her surgically repaired neck, and and still was able to make that match happen. I mean, that, that right there in itself shows that Nikki Bella is, regardless of what you think, deserves that spotlight right now she she definitely put into that and i'm hoping that they give her another shot at that against ronda because it was a really entertaining match i think you're right ronda rousey's best match so far because she really had to take a beating 
Uh, I she's got to work on the facial expressions. Yeah, uh, she's, <laughs> even even one of her promos. I know we'll get to that when we touch bases. Like with her promos, she's all like, "Hey, oh, uh, hey, oh, uh, you yeah. know." It's just like, it's 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 what it, what's cool about this though is that we're actually seeing somebody from the very beginning and transforming. This isn't like John Cena being independent for five years or six years, how many years it was, and all of a sudden shows up on Raw and does ruthless aggression or anything like that. This is a this is a pure, like, no training involved outside of uh, MMA. In and all we're, fairness, we're, though, if to interject, in all fairness, <laughs> his facial expressions through that during that ruthless aggression promo was just as bad as a Ronda Rousey facial. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, he had more time to practice it too. So yeah. damn it. Uh, uh, I, and I'm yeah. pretty sure he was coming on the same size shorts as Ronda too. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice and shiny. So, uh, one, one, one other thing I did want to say too is I know. No, we don't care. All right, whatever. <laughs> you just made the list. Okay. I'm trying. I'm, I'm kidding, Carl. Go on ahead. What you guys say, <laughs> Carl? Uh... Adams Anderson. <laughs> Man. <laughs> no. Um. And, and I know it was one of the things that we talked about too, and as I know, it was something that we were kind of worried about too was, all right, cool. We have Evolution All Women's Pay Per View, and then like a week later, it's Crown Jewel. Like, ah, uh, really? Like, are, you're just going to kind of undermine this whole thing. Not, not like after watching Evolution and after watching Crown Jewel, and I, I can even kind of use this as a step into it if you guys want to. Um, I'm not even mad. That hey. Evolution, Evolution just blew it out of the water. And, and you know the thoughts, and you know my thought process and where I'm coming behind it because we talked about it before. It's like you know you're doing the women's roster a disservice by having the all women's pay per view and then turning going back to Saudi Arabia with no women's matches like it was before. Yeah, and we will, and yeah, we will use that too, that like. Stone. The, Go for uh, it. You know, you talk about the, you know whether or not the crown jewel is going to overstep and undermine what happened to Evolution, and at the end of the day, it actually amplified Evolution Absolutely. because yeah. by Absolutely. bringing in the, you know the top stars to Saudi Arabia to have the crown jewel pay per view, by bringing people from the past in, by having Shane O'Mac win the World Cup, uh, you just amplified how great of a show and a performance that Evolution truly was. And, and that, you know, if anything, the, the fact the women weren't allowed at Saudi Arabia was better for them for that reason, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so it also, it also goes to what we've said now, who, who produced evolution? If I'm not mistaken, that was triple H's hand, nope. right? I'm pretty sure. And if you look at the way the show was shot, the, the ring, the, it was simplistic. It was, it was like an indie type of show. Uh, it was like NXT. They had the yep. lights were on the the ring. Yep. You know, there's there's rumors that people were doing that because of it wasn't sold out, whatever it may be. But I've seen pictures from the show where it's completely packed. They did it for a reason. I mean, if you look at the guardrails, the guardrails were an you know NXT Ring of Honor New Japan style of, of yep. ring or um rails and and covers they weren't the barriers they weren't it wasn't the production that a, a, a wwe pay-per-view or show is it was more simplistic which it f- put the focus on the performers and the matches and in the fact that you know nassau arena that's an arena that's a tough arena to be in uh it, really it always has been. you know we have some of the best performers in there and they're just shitting on the entire time and they were, behind, you know, we talked about like the, the, you know, if you go back a year ago, a year ago, exactly this week, and we talk about like the UK last year and the UK earlier this year and how they, the, the UK just gets behind the show. Um, now they did it this last couple of days because they just were dead, but well, you know, a they, little bit they, more dead on Raw than SmackDown, like right? Smackdown but a little bit more lively. the fans were, were almost like a, the UK were. And cheering on the stand, the fans. They were they were cheering. There there wasn't a single part of that match where we got beach balls, where we got you know a chant for somebody who's not there. We didn't get you know boos or anything like that. It was a nonstop cheer session from beginning to end. And then we go to Crown Jewel, and they're playing on their iPads and tablets in their recliners around the ring, and not you know there you know we could say whatever we want about the Crown Jewel and the, and the 
the work and the storyline and the writing, whatever. But at the end of the day, even with the exception of a couple matches, that was still a great card um, as far as the way the matches went. If you look at the World Cup, every single match in the World Cup, with the exception of the final, was a great match. Oh, yeah. You know, Kurt Angle and Dolph Ziggler, nobody expected that to be even halfway decent. And it was actually a pretty good match. It was actually could have been considered one of the best matches of the night. Um, you know, it, it, so you look at those matches, obviously all the other ones I, were no really no big deal. But if you look at those matches, um, even even the, the AJ Styles and Samoa Joe match wasn't wasn't bad, wasn't great, but it was decent. Um, but for, I mean, when you compare that to Evolution, man, two completely different levels. And that one had the production level behind it. I'm yeah, pretty sure it, they did more fireworks for that one show in the last six WrestleManias combined. So, so, and this is, this is, I'm glad we're using this episode because I'm going to tell you right now, man, I, being that I'm the one who's, who pretty much hams up WWE all the time. Cause that's the main show I watch. Um, dude, I was sick and disgusted with that pay-per-view. I saw that pay-per-view for exactly what it was. It was just a money whore grab. That's all it was. They, 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 I mean, come on. They signed Hulk Hogan at the last minute to come out and show up because two of their big, biggest stars refused to go to Saudi Arabia for whatever reasons they have in line. And Daniel Bryan and John Cena. So they bring in Hulk Hogan who needs his money. Um, the, you're right. The production of it, the stupid fireworks every two seconds. Like there was more fireworks in that show than I think the last four WrestleManias combined. Um, the matches, there was nothing. I, I mean, first of all, you're 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 saying that this tournament's going to determine the best wrestler in the world. Yet you didn't have the entire world represented. A, B, the best wrestler in your in your freaking uh, lineup is the one that's holding the freaking heavyweight championship. Not some crap tournament that ultimately has freaking uh, has Shane McMahon win it. So McMahon's go in and just stick their freaking hands in crap and make it. It's it just shitty. I'm going to say it, it was shitty. I, 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 there was, I, I agree with you. Dolph Ziggler and Kurt Angle was a phenomenal match. Well, more than I would have ever expected out of it. But all even, in all, this even, pain, even the Dolph, I mean, it wasn't even the one of the matches that I thoroughly enjoyed just because, I mean, it could have been better given the matches they've had, but that was Rollins and Ziggler. Like, look at, yeah. look at back at some matches they've had earlier this year. Phenomenal matches, great matches. This one, yeah. Eh. And I and I feel and, so, and, that, and that's saying something. That's and I feel sorry something. for I feel sorry for AJ and Samoa Joe, because oh, that yeah. was a forced match. The match was supposed to be Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles, whichever which I would have I would have watched. Uh no, because Daniel Bryan refused to go. They have his match before he loses, and then Samoa Joe comes out and just takes in the place again. And I feel bad for that because that was the wrong setting to bring such a nice. That's one of the best feuds we've had this year, and not everyone got to see that because at being at eleven o'clock on a freaking Friday when everyone's at work. Well, not only just, that, but it also takes tears down the potential of what we had coming with Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles mm-hmm. because obviously he's not going to Saudi Arabia, so we're not going to let him win the belt. And we're not. We're gonna have the belt at the show. So it's like we had this great storyline, and it all just got defeated. That whole match between Miz and Daniel Bryan just became invalid. Yep. yep. Yeah. No. It, it, right here, this shirt says it all, man. The the McMahon's just screwed us over on this one. They should be in prison after that, dude. I really feel like we got hosed. Thank God Survivor Series looks like, which we'll talk about a little bit, looks like it's lining up to be solid. But I'm telling you right now, man, I have never in my so many years of watching WWE have I felt that violated since the freaking 80s switch 90s, man. It was just a garbage pay-per-view setup that they had so many months to do and everyone knew exactly what it was for. It's because they have 10 freaking pay-per-views set up and they've got their money for it. WWE doesn't need the money. They could have easily pulled out and won the fan base, but instead they did exactly what the entire pay-per-view was, was piss on the fans' ideas and move on. I said it. I said it. Anything you want to throw in there, my freak? You're not wrong. That's all I'm going to say. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, dude, I was quite depressed with that. I didn't even, uh, to be perfectly frank, I didn't even watch it all. I really didn't know about Shane McMahon until Monday afternoon. Yeah, and And, uh, I was off on Fridays. So, uh, 
you know, when I was watching, it was on, it was nine o'clock in the morning, which means I'm getting ready for my day. It's kind of just so I have it on. So, um, was through you know entertained for most of the match or the card. I uh, was kind of in and out watching it. Uh, the ending was ridiculous. Brock Lesnar was ridiculous. Um, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But this. had it, had that match been or had that card been been on later in the day. I probably would have been more pissed off than I was. I had wasted my day. Um, the fact that it was on in the morning when I'm kind of just getting around the house and kind of do my thing, uh, you know, it was. It's kind of one of those things. Like, do I have this on or do I have reruns of, you know, of The Office playing? Um, yeah, probably would have been more entertaining to have The Office on. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell but, you this much: for me, the, the minute Brock won it, I just turned it off. I, I couldn't watch the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, I just and, watched and, highlights later on. Yeah, it, because you got the main event. The main event wasn't much better. It was it, that the main event has so much potential. But again, we talked about the McMahons and who won the match? Triple H. Who had the opportunity to win this match? Shawn Michaels. How did Triple H win this match? With a broken freaking pectoral muscle, a rip or torn pectoral muscle, yep. and with a half ass uh, pedigree. And it's like, great, you just beat them, beat them in at the last pay per view in Australia, and now you're gonna do it again. So it's like, why you insert? Why do you have to continually just because you're in the match, you don't need the win? And if that was the case, if it was all about them getting the win, that's fine. But why not have Shawn Michaels get the win? Yep. It doesn't make sense. His first match in ten years, and you're hey. gonna. Triple H get the, the, a third win this year? Like, come on now. So, so, and then what are you doing with the Brothers of Destruction? What are you doing with the Undertaker and Kane? Like, Kane's got a city to run now. So you bring him in for a couple matches for him to lose, and now he's gone again. It's 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 completely worthless. Like it was, it, like I said, man. This this pay per view was solely for the purpose of money. We've said it. They brought all those old timers over there so people in Saudi Arabia could see these guys that they've only seen on TV, pretty much for the most part have one chance to check him out it was a, just a complete garbage pay-per-view and it's i hope they never do it again i, I really do i was borderline well, canceling my subscription <laughs> borderline the only thing is the reason why i keep it is because of the real good shows which are nxt nxt uk and uh whatnot so anyways sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there marty but that was, no, that was true. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so there's the pay-per-views guys let's let's get out of the, the the shit zone and let's talk some about some of the topics let's uh let's get this one out of the way because this is going to bring so much so much fire hey what is he now a four-time champion brock lesnar uh, yeah. two-time universal champion I, I don't know. Five, he's, right. he's, I think he's, it's the fourth time he's had a title in three years. Oh, yeah, and he's only defended it three times. Hey! Goodbye, Universal Championship. It was good to see you once in a while. That's exactly oh, what honest, we have. Oh, oh, honestly, and, 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 and what was that? I forget what I read. With his new contract, he's only slated for two pay-per-views, one of them being WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know he's not gonna be at he's not gonna be at Royal Rumble because he's supposed to be fighting DC that month. Uh, yeah. Well, he's and, supposed and, to be at. Wait, no, no, he's supposed to be at Survivor Series, oh, right? And, he's and got that bad. Number two. There's paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's uh, once and, again and, WWE stick. Uh, honestly, wrong, make, wrong, wrong people running the show. Honestly, honestly, Rollins hit it on the head on Monday. You know, when he was talking about, you know, you know, when we was talking about Lesnar and all that stuff, he was just like, yeah, guess what? Brock's not even here. He gave him the title and pretty much invalidated everything Roman did to get it. Oh, yep. you mean he came out and gave the same promo that Roman gave? Yeah, right. Essentially. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Exactly. For all those people hating on Roman, how are you feeling now? I'd I feel rather like have. I, I, I feel like I still haven't watched an entire Raw since he's left. Yeah. I, I mean, I haven't. Yeah, I've watched the hour 30 minute Hulu version of it, man. I, did, um, I didn't even do that. I watched it on the USA app and I still have only got 53 minutes into it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I don't know what the hell they're thinking, man. Why give it to him? I, I give it to nobody. Leave it vacated. Let him run a tournament. I don't know, man. If you're pissed Honestly. at Braun, if you're pissed at Braun Strowman, 
Don't give it. Don't just give it to Brock Lesnar. No one wants Brock Honestly, Lesnar. At this point, the belt. And, and I'm going to say this just out of sheer hatred I have for the way they did it. Let Baron Corbin have the title. Just to, at least it's there every night. Every That's night. it. I'm out. <laughs> wow, man. Really? You can't Idiot. give it back to Finn Balor? Dude, they, they could have easily had said an F you to Saudi Arabia and had a, a no finish for that match. Absolutely. And now the belt is open. You have a tournament. I don't know. You have freaking Drew McIntyre, who's prime ready and, and, and yes. willing to get that belt, who could Absolutely. be walking around that title right now. Hell oh. yeah. I don't get it, man. I just it's It seems like right now WWE is literally like – like not even looking at what the fans want. They just say, F everybody else. Let's just do it ourselves. We don't care what you think. It's almost like attitude error, except people actually like the attitude error. No, this is not the attitude error because the attitude <laughs> error was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's my point, though. It was the whole idea that it was anti-establishment, everything going on there. Now it just seems like they don't give a crap, man, and it's it's horrible. Uh, yeah, it's we have absolute- so much better talent than we had in the attitude era. And they're doing not, absolutely nothing with them. Absolutely, yeah, man. This is this is garbage. You have all this hot, this hot commodity uh, talent in NXT that's waiting for their push, and they're getting dumped on because Brock Lesnar has the belt again, and he's going to show up maybe once a month, and it's just going to be no. Pay per views. Oh, I mean, they God, really sh- it should be AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins at Survivor Series. And that would be I a take fantastic it. match. Yeah. I take I take I take AJ Styles versus freaking Sammy Sammy Zayn at this point. I don't care. Anybody but Brock freaking Lesnar, man. This is this is straight horrible, horrible news. Yeah. And absolutely. uh yeah, I, I mean I wanna do exp- I, I wanna drop F bombs, but I'm gonna keep it nice. I, I um, that's why I have been somewhat quiet because I know <laughs> what I want to say. Um, I'll leave that to my Twitter page. So if you haven't yet, go to a bearded master on Twitter, and you can see exactly my thoughts on Brock Lesnar winning his title. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, Hashtag I, shameless I, plug. <laughs> you made the list. No, it's good. <laughs> uh, all right. So let, let, let's let, let's leave that crap pile, and uh, let's look at something else. There. There is uh, got a couple injury things going on right now with two of the major athletes, uh, especially on Raw. Let's start with Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss has not had a single – I don't think she's had a singles match since her fight with Ronda Rousey where, from what I remember, she got either a broken nose, a messed up shoulder. I mean, she got beat up by Ronda Rousey. One of the things we talked about when Ronda first came to WWE is her ability to be able to turn off UFC and make it WWE. And for Alexa Bliss, she apparently forgot to turn off the switch. So Alexa Bliss has been on the sidelines now for, what is this, two months now? They've got her as the captain of the women's survivors team. Coming out dressing up like she's, uh, you know, uh, business attire, and uh, if I, and what I was reading on some of the stuff, to, they are seeing some things. There are rumors, just rumors, and of course, you know how rumors are and stuff. But some people are saying that injuries are significant enough where he, she's either going to be on the shelf for a while or potentially mess her up really long term. Um, once again, just rumors though. Uh, but it just it just goes to show we've got Alexa Bliss now out uh only being used for i don't want to say scenery uh she's got mic skills and talent and stuff but we just don't get to see the athletic prowess of it uh how do you think this is going to hurt the women's uh side on raw right now not having one of your big names um i don't actually i think it might elevate uh the women's division the and actually i'm not gonna lie i just re- I read another article right now um it looks like it's partly because of the injury, but it also looks like she might be taking more of an authority role on on the raw roster. And for everyone who's said that she's been pushed so much, and you know, she might have been. Yeah, she's been probably the the longest reigning champion over the last couple of years, both SmackDown and on Raw. She's gone both ways. Um, but 
if they're going to go this route to make her more of an authority figure and keep her out of the ring for the time being, not knowing what the exact injury is or what the protocol or what the, the timeline on that recovery is going to be, this opens up the, the position for other women to potentially get that spot that she's been carrying for so long. Um, so I think it's going to elevate the rest of the roster to jump up and, and fill that gap. I mean, she, she may not be the best performer and wrestler on the show, but she's a damn good talent. Uh, the mic skills, and that's probably one reason why they're looking at more of an authority figure with her, because she can do that. She can be the one that's talking and, and raising the female roster without even being in the ring. I think that she's one of the few that probably could do that. Um, if you look at the ones who are wrestlers on that roster, Natalia, uh, you know, it doesn't you know who are, Nia Jax or whatever it may be they don't care, they don't command the crowd or the mic nearly as much as as Alexa Bliss does um, you put the mic in any one of their hands and I immediately tune out put the mat put the put the mic in Ronda Rousey's hand and I don't want to listen whatsoever put the mic in Alexa Bliss's hand I'm listening to what she's got to say unless it's a, a, a promo on Bailey then I don't want to talk about it no more <laughs> but other than that I want to listen. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they do with her there. I'd rather her be an authority figure than Baron Corbin any day of the week. Uh, look yeah. at what the SmackDown yeah. roster has done, or the lineup has done with a Plipwood Page being the authority figure there. It's been fantastic show. Uh, yeah. It's much better, much better production wise from start to finish than Raw has. Um, it's not. I'm not saying it's because she's a female because she's doing it, but if you're going to talk about, we just came off the biggest pay per view of the year. As far as evolution goes and, and the way it came off, why not put the female that's been leading the division for as long as it has at the forefront of that show? Now, I, I think it might actually give an opportunity where they could start bringing some of the talent back into the fold as far as someone like, say, Asuka. I think Asuka, since she's been on the, the – they haven't utilized her. She's one of the better in-ring talents. Obviously, Mike skills not happening as much. Uh, language barrier, obviously, but – as far as the actual ring skills, one of the better ones. You've also, from the May Young tournament, have had a lot of uh, influx coming in as well. Now you got the UK with Tony Storm, Storm, phenomenal, amazing. She's only 23 years old and she's already got the wrestling world by the throat, pretty much. Um, and then you've got um, Kyra Singh, who's NXT. She's going to be going with Shayna Baszler. You had the insertion recently of the other two four four horsewomen that bring in the all four. So you've got the you got this. We've talked about it. You've got this talent starting to hit the NXT level. NXT's got to start pushing some people into the raw area, or at least start giving them their own show, two hours or whatever. So, uh, but I do think bad timing to have. I mean. You said she wasn't the best talent, but I think out of what they have right now, she is one of the better in-ring talent. She's able to put everything together in Alexa Bliss, and it's just a bad timing because they need to start forcing people to get into that show again uh, before they start losing momentum. Uh, my freak, what what are you what are you thinking back there, buddy? I was going to say something, and for the second time in the, probably the, the last ten minutes, I'm going to say something. Mario's going to be like, "I'm done." Later. Um, I, I, I agree with them to the point, you know, with, with Alexa, with how, who she is, you know, in ring performer, it's gotten better than where she was. Her mic skills are off the charts. Like, I'm going to say it when it comes to mic skills, she's the female version of the miss. I said it. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with it. Not now. I, I concur. 100%. Yeah. I concur. So like, no. so. And, and that's something else too that if you've noticed too with some you know some of these other talents that you know not necessarily are better on the mic skills they've been given a manager. I mean, look at Bobby Lashley, the team name with Lilo Rush. Uh, look at Drake Maverick going back with AOP. Um, and even on the SmackDown side, uh, Zelina Vega with uh, Cian Almas, even though we haven't seen them much together lately because of everything that's been going on, but you're, you're kind of pushing more of that management kind of style back into it. Um, and I think it's a way to help um, help increase like a lot of that. You know, those are weaker on the mic skills, but they're better in ring performers. Stick them with people that are great in the mic skills and get the crowd lived up and get these things going up. Create a lot more interesting storylines and help further the divisions. So I'm all for it. 
Uh, I hope this injury isn't long term. I hope everything's okay because I am a big Alexa Bliss fan. So yeah, it, it it's a little it's a little discerning because uh, she was going nonstop. I get it when you got to take a break, got to take a break. But usually, if someone gets injured, you find out about it. Like we hear about it, we see it. Right now, it's completely in the dark with her. So it, it once again leads me to believe: Does it get to that level of page? Did she really get injured enough to where she's going to be on the shelf for a long-term period of time? Like, and I'm not talking like months. I'm talking potential years. Is it that bad? We don't know. Uh, it's just it, I'm hoping she did it, though, because that's 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 rough because she's fought her ass off to get where she wants to be and have it get yanked away just like that. It's almost like another down Daniel Bryan situation. You win your belt, yeah. then you give it away, you know. Um, let's Let's move on to the next topic, Dean Ambrose's turn. Oh, we 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 kind of expected it happening, but man, did it did it did it come fast and hard, man? I mean, straight up win the tag team titles, everything's great. Night after, uh, it was the night of Roman uh, coming out and and everything, yep. and then all of a sudden, right at the end, bam, hit the dirty deeds and moved on. And some of the faces in the crowd was priceless. They're like, "What the hell?" You know. Um, what my my two cents? I'll start on this one. My two cents on it is good that they split them up. Uh, when you lose Roman, there's no need to have the shield. It was cool to see him as a tag team, but I think right now Seth Rollins could hold his own. I think Dean Ambrose needs to be solo more than anybody else right now because of that long stay he had away. And as he's come back, it was just right into the shield, so there was no individual career happening for him. So it's going to be good for him to go solo and even better, a heel. Uh, I think heel for him is good because he's got that personality for it, which will be great. I, I can't wait to see the battles he has. The thing that makes me uncomfortable about this is your situation you have with him and the announce team. You know, you got his wife over there, man. <laughs> Seriously, I was, about, I, I, was about, I, I, was, I was about to hit this uh, hit this too. Hell yeah. Um, Every time he comes out, she says nothing. Not wrong, a damn wrong. word. So you said you haven't you've been watching uh you didn't watch all of us last week. Um I did watch this part this week and they are drilling her on Monday night. Oh yeah, um, they're, they're asking her questions, but know, I'm saying no no no, but she's at the point where she's like telling him like he doesn't tell me, he will not tell me. You know, we, we, I try to ask him. He is not giving me any information. I don't know what he's doing. This is this, what he's doing out here. I have no clue what he's doing. So she started finally speaking out on it this week while Corey and Michael Cole are, are hitting her up on it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, before that, it was like, so well, it's, is, it's, is it's there? like even is during, at all. Yeah, even during his matches, though. He's she she doesn't comment a lot during especially recently obviously with this this heel change and yeah you're right I re, I did watch that part where where Corey said hey what is going on as he said anything yeah that's exactly what she said but man she skirts it she does not uh, she's completely silent during that time and it, and he, and you can feel the uncomfortableness and I I know it's part of it you know that's that's what's happening but you could still it just feels awkward. Feels awkward. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they keep him on but RAR. Switch at, at the same time, it. that kind of adds to the value of that. It's it's awkward. Yeah, seeing Dean turn on on Rollins, yet not give a real reason, and kind of still stay in the back and kind of stalk him at the ring after he loses a match. It's you know, so it's like it's the ambiance of it all is meshing well. Uh, oh yeah, I think once like it comes out why and what he's doing and what's going on, then I think that that she'll start piping in more. But I think her being silent right now, it, it's for it, it's strictly I believe for the fact that they want us to believe she doesn't know what's going on. Um, yeah, yeah. If she starts talking like she doesn't know what's going on and talking about it, it's gonna be like okay, whatever. We know you really know what's going on. Like, come on, don't don't play as stupid here. Um, and by her being <laughs> quiet takes that away and so i do enjoy the fact that they that they have kept her quiet for the most part yeah, yeah. so you got anything else to throw in there on that one mind freak i think we're yeah. all excited about it right we are it's just it's just the coming out just the, the looks 
like I mean, he's the lunatic fringe you know what's going on up there what 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 wheels are turning so i'm just gonna start doing the cory graves just like <laughs> oh just man full saxton. shut up saxton well, ladies- full saxton huh all right <laughs> um yeah it'll be interesting to see I, I i i'm gonna throw this out there man i think it's gonna get to a point though where they might have to trade him over to smackdown to alleviate that pressure unless they decide to do something with her and maybe even have her join in like no, not from I, the announcer once booth. it's all once it all comes out and it's all played out um i think she's gonna be she's gonna be able to add value to that story again uh i think yeah. she's gonna be able to build it up it'll be even being better if she's on the side against dean ambrose um oh absolutely and, and that's gonna make it even better uh, i think that'd be the best thing to do um obviously we already have a heel announcer unless they're going to do a double switch and make Corey Graves the, the baby face commentator. Uh, <laughs> Which I don't think that. I they honestly, can't do that. Do that. <laughs> uh, but no, if they make, if they make it to where she's, you know, siding with Seth Rollins and does the matches t- to favor him, um, it, it adds more value to the heel turn. And like, he's, he's completely unhinged to the point where, his wife isn't even behind him at this point. And we don't really get that ever. I mean, it's always the wife's on the side, you know. Uh, this will be the first time we see that happen um, with the exception. You know, when's the last – the last? Oh, well, I guess the last time we saw it was when Stephanie McMahon was on Kurt Angle's side and he was facing Triple H. I can yeah. tell you the last time I saw it, and this is going to be my nerd side, episode three, man. Anakin going over. Oh, man, you turned her against me. Ah! You went Thank there. You I did. You went there. I totally did. You were setting it up perfectly. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could just take that whole scene and Photoshop Dean and Seth's face there. Totally. See? <laughs> Damn you! My now I'm going to spend the rest of the night. Spend the rest of the night photoshopping that. Dude, my freak was totally with me on that, dude. If I had the Photoshop skills, I would have did it two minutes ago, man. Shoot. <laughs> Oh man. All right. So we've gotten through a couple good things there. <laughs> uh, I, I know we didn't put this in the little thing, but I do want to give a quick shout out to the May Young Classic. That was a phenomenal series. If you haven't seen it yet, take a minute to watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure by now you've probably see the outcome and everything. But ultimately, man, that was some high quality wrestling. It's the future of WWE's uh women's division is incredibly bright it looks like they've signed at least gosh i want to say at least seven to eight ladies from that from that actual tournament which i think is double the amount they did from year before and that's not even uh, counting the women they've signed outside of the may young classic this year absolutely yeah yeah there's they they've got a lot of talent that's coming through there and they're already starting to show up in in shows and everything and obviously tony storm nxt uk also uh uh, I got to keep saying Kari Singh, but it's, uh, it's her friend. Eo Shirai. Thank, you. Thank you. Eo Shirai. She's actually NXT already. So it's, it's awesome to see that not only are they getting these, uh, uh, that they got the, they got the pop from a man. They're, they're already throwing them into the mix. So that, that uh, hopefully gives us the hope that they are thinking about trying to do something with the ladies as far as maybe even giving them their own show because they've got a lot of talent that's coming through. Yeah. So after evolution with the amount of signings they've had for the female roster, um, I think they absolutely. I would. I they 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 have more legitimacy to, to add an hour long show or even a two hour show for women before they do a two hundred five or um, you know whatever. A, Don't say NXT, show. man. I, I think I think I think women and NXT should have their two hour shows. And you're right, two hundred five. Two hundred five is just right now. Like I I I blew that thing up about five or six months ago. I can't blow it up right now because two hundred five is literally Lucha House Party versus whoever that week. They're That's not even, on, what they're not even on there anymore. They're on the main roster now. No, no, no. Lucha House Party. Uh, I just watched it the other day, man. There's oh, a bit. Their their big thing going right now is T.J. Perkins trying to take people's masks, and it's just Lucha House Party week after week, and it's just boring yeah. the hell out of well, me. Because they so, were on. They were on Raw last week. Yeah, they did have them on Raw. They did mention that, but they're still they're they're, they're still two hundred five. If they can get them team up with Rey Mysterio, then they got something going. So yeah, as long as on um, the main roster, I do not, and I repeat, do not want to see Rey Mysterio on two hundred five. Hell no. 
And they no. better not. And then knowing the WWE, they could do that to bring some star power to 205. Yeah. Uh, but not after you just signed a legend back to the roster. You yeah, exactly. It's just stupid. And, and, and having him on the Survivor Series team? No. Yeah. All right, so now we got one more injury update. Braun Strowman, Marty uh, Bearded Master, was talking a little bit about this beforehand. Uh, I I said something. I know something about him. Marty, you uh, you were reading up on Braun Strowman. There's some injuries he might have, might be on the shelf, something else going on. Why don't you fill us in, buddy? Yeah, I mean, there, there, from things I've read, it looks like he may have some knee injuries or knee issues. Not necessarily injuries because he's still running around, but with the exception of the Brock Lesnar match, we really haven't seen him in ring performing too much before and after that. He spent Monday night running around. He spent uh, – he might have had a match at the end of the night. Like I said, I just still didn't finish watching the card. Uh, yeah. But even last week, I don't remember him having a match last week. I mean, he might have been in the in a match, but I don't think I remember watching him wrestle I, I much. Think, I think the last time he was in a match was a Brock. couple weeks ago. No, well, before Brock. Oh yeah, uh, a couple weeks ago when he left uh, after he uh, got big booted by Drew McIntyre at the end of the main event. Now me, now me being a big guy, uh, you know, in my heyday, I was six five, three fifty. I'm nowhere close, or no, three twenty five. Nowhere close to his size, but. I'm definitely familiar with uh, when you could see stuff, especially with me. I've actually had a serious injury back in 96. That last show, I noticed it, man. Him chasing Baron Corbin the entire time. The part I noticed that something was up with him is when he was trying to chase him outside toward the car and he was taking off. Man, he was so stiff in the running, and those strides were so damn short. Like, he's got, a, he's a big man with big legs, and when he runs, it's like his stride – take some farther faster and well, he look was at the not past. pulling you know one thing we used to talk about was the fact that he he can move around quickly for just a big guy he can cover that yeah. ground. and when he first ran down to the ring while baron corbin was in there you know after he runs him out of the ring and starts running back up before he, the, the the roster you know stops him he was barely moving around then up that ramp and it was yeah. like you can tell right there something was wrong because he was not – beforehand, he would have bulldozed through that line, no questions asked. Um, so, I mean, you got the injuries, that the potential injuries there. They haven't really announced yet, uh, which I'm sure they're probably going to get to at some point. Uh, but there's also – there's there's reports that he might be getting some backstage heat from, uh, from the authority and from everyone else around there. You know, like um, he may be just – you know, they're not happy with him right now. Uh, and that could be seen, you know, maybe because of the injuries or, or whatever it might be. Uh, that could be going uh, being a factor as well as the injuries as to why Brock Lesnar got the universal title given. To him again. Uh, uh, quit so bringing it up. If this is the case that it's nothing serious. Uh, he is a big guy. So if it is something with his knees, I mean, let's be honest. Braun Strowman has been on every show since he's been there. You know, with the exception of when he was with the Wyatt family and was basically the background, um, ever since they split, literally he's the been, background, he's been on nearly every show and, and, and every every card. Uh, so the dude for his size has been pretty damn active. Yeah, uh, it, I mean, he's a big dude. It's only so long before them knees give out. You know, look at Absolutely. look at Kane and look at Big Show. Uh, I mean, he, they've all been there. So yeah. could they could it be time for him to get some reconstruction done to to, re, to bring him back up possibly that could be a rebranding for him um, maybe they're waiting for Nicholas to get done with the spring or winter session so he can come back and run for the tag teams as the AOP um, <laughs> but no I I I hope it's something serious because he it, you know we're already missing Roman and you can already see that. And and that the card is devaluing with the law, with the absence of Roman Reigns, uh, Braun Strowman. He may not be the greatest wrestler. He's not re- technically. I don't even consider him a wrestler. I consider him a powerhouse. You know, yeah. we look at Kane. Kane's not a wrestler. Uh, Big Show's not a wrestler. You know, Andre the Giant wasn't a wrestler. They're you know, these are These are these, man. are big, these are big powerhouses. Uh, there were, you know, courses. So to lose not only Roman, but then to lose Braun Strowman, obviously there's guys that can pick up after that, but we haven't seen it and they haven't done it yet. So, you know, to lose him, 
we, really? we kind of, hopefully it's something serious that keeps him out for too long. Yeah. And really, the only other person you have that's big like that too that's left if Braun is injured. And I'm not saying he shall not be named right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Drew, well, he, he won't has, show up anyways. Yeah, you have a uh, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, and you well, got and you got AOP. If somebody's out there looking for a contract right now, they could always bring back Big Cass. Um, uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Although. Although the man formerly known as Enzo Amore, now known as Real One, will be in LA during Survivor Series and making his return the night after. Not no. to WWE, but he'll be doing a concert in LA the night oh after. Oh my Survivor gosh! Series. So, oh, you enjoy that concert, buddy. Uh, uh, I will be, not be at that concert. You and the uh, other, the, the twelve other well, people. Wait, well, well, you it. don't got the sauce. Um, I have to work because I will be yeah. taking Sunday off so I can be at Survivor Series. Oh, I'm still trying to see if I can make it there. We'll see what happens. Um, so, I mean, for the, for pretty much, that was a lot of the stuff we were going to be chatting about. I know, I know, uh, I want, I want, uh, Marty to throw in some stuff here really quick about, uh, Oh, wait, 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 hold on a sec. Mind freak, go for it, man. You, 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 how, how, how dare you? How dare you want to disrespect the champ to not bring up the champ? The last Becky. kicker? Becky, oh, yeah. uh, no, it, it, come on, man. We're, we're all on the same page on this. We're all extremely happy that where she's at with that right now. She's the man. <laughs> she, she, dude, there's nobody that's owning the WWE. Or Twitter better than Becky Lynch right now. <laughs> right? Did you did you see her tweet from today? No, not today. Yeah, yeah, I did. She called out Travis freaking Brown. <laughs> she is hitting all <laughs> angles. The fact that she's calling Ronda Rousey Ronnie, <laughs> which is hey, great. Travis, come get your wife. She's drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I will say, I will say hold that. Back not, hold, take take away her her storyline with Ronda. She's having a feud of the century right now with, with Seth everybody. Freaking Rollins. Like, yes. Are you serious? Like she's going after. If if you have a pulse, she's going after you. Nobody <laughs> is off limits right now. No. Nope. And it is amazing. <laughs> it yeah, is. I, she is by far the best and highest commodity in the WWE right now. In fact, I would go as far as saying she may be the hardest commodity in wrestling. Uh, and, and that's going to lead to the next segment. Um, you know, we we talk about the hardest commodity for wrestling in, in the industry over the last six months has been the man Cody Rhodes. Hasn't really been doing much the last couple of months. He lost his title, his NWA uh, title, at NWA, uh, just a, a month and a half, just a month and a half after he won it all in, uh, he's you know he all he has now is the is the New Japan U.S. title. He lost his six man titles with the the Young Bucks this last week at Ring of Honor to the Kingdom. Uh, so with the fact that their contracts are about to expire, really don't know what's going on with Cody Rhodes and the Bucks and and the Elite. Uh, so when you start looking at where he was the hottest commodity in wrestling. As he's starting to go down, we have somebody completely taking that spot and moving to a much higher elevated level, and that is the man, Becky Lynch. Nobody is hotter. If you're talking wrestling, nobody is hotter than her, and it is amazing right now. It's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Stone cold Becky Lynch. I've been saying it. (laughs) She, she. She is literally one step away from going after the McMahons. Oh, that, yeah. That's the next step. I mean, she's not going to go after AJ. She's already going after Seth Rollins. Hell, she may even go after Brock Lesnar next. Oh, if she goes after Brock Lesnar, oh, my God, will this be amazing. Like, like even, even her promo on SmackDown, like, after it was done, she was just like, she's just like, all right, I'm ready to fight. Who's going to fight me? Let's go. The champ wants to fight. Come on. <laughs> yeah no i mean you could like i'm just as i'm listening to you guys i'm just looking at her at her feet uh feed uh her feed her twitter feed and i think uh siri who is the biggest stand ronnie 
Rousey? Yes. Show me evidence. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It is awesome. Well, there's, there's, she, 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 she tweets, retweeted Rhonda's tweet from a couple days ago, or it might have been yesterday. Um, and she retweeted it by quoting it. And her, her commentary or her caption to it, she was reciting lines from Eminem's Stan in that That's in the right. retweet. Yes. And it yes. Was, there's nobody she's 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 owning it right now and it's fantastic. Oh, I it love is. it. Here, here here's a good one that I actually saw earlier. I wanted to, so this was I don't know, it's a couple days ago. Okay, thanks, Ronnie's internet guy. You tell her the man said if she ever puts herself above me again, even on a poster, I'm going to plat her eyebrows with a kick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, she's she's phenomenal on that. Right now, she's owning everything. It's it's. I mean. It, it's not like I didn't want to talk about it, but dude, we could go in there two hours just talking about Becky Lynch right now. Oh, the absolutely. way she's on right now, this is this is to me, like you said, Stone Cold Becky Lynch. This is starting to get Stone Cold level as far as how she's able to do this, and she has a bigger platform than Stone Cold has because Stone Cold only had television. He had the pay per views, and that was it. I mean, you get the occasional interviews and stuff, or whatever television shows that NBC tried to throw at him. But for the most part, it was just television. Now, granted, what he did with having the, with having that limited platform, I don't think will ever be touched. But if I can't say it, man, Becky Lynch with everything she has for her uh, and the platform she has, holy crap, she is she is tickling that area. She's getting up there. The way she's moving. Yeah. She's getting up that mountain. Yeah, and it's like Marty said. If she starts going after the big mans, it, it's 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 stone cold. And depending on what happens in this match or Rousey at Survivor Series, that easily could be her next target. Win or lose, could be the McMahons and WWE itself. Uh, probably Stephanie McMahon will come out and do something. There you go. I don't know. I'm just going to throw it out there. What the hell? They're doing everything else right now. Blah. Uh, um, no, no, it's been a while since we had a McMahon as a special referee. Well, that's definitely, <laughs> definitely an emphasis on special. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I think the, I think the business runs a hell of a lot better when the McMahons are final. Like, like when Shane McMahon was just behind the scenes, coming out, doing his thing, let Daniel Bryan do his thing. That was awesome. With Kurt Angle, did the same thing on Raw. Stephanie McMahon just came out once, in a, like once a month. Okay, fine. When you start seeing the weekly dose of a McMahon and interjecting themselves in something like that dumb tournament, uh, it gets. It's now getting to the point where the McMahons are like, "Oh man, something's wrong. We got to try to fix it ourselves." And it's the absolute wrong idea. This is not Vince McMahon versus Stone Cold anymore. This isn't the Authority. This isn't any of that crap. This has gotten to a point where the talent on all the shows do not need to have a McMahon's finger in the Kool-Aid. They don't need anything. They've got too much talent, in fact, and they need to find a way to be able to display all the talent they do have. So the last thing you want to do is have a McMahon pull the freaking limelight from some of the talent, give it to Samoa Joe, give it to Drew McIntyre, give it to guys who actually do have things going. I mean, Ziggler needs some little bit more love, man. He's really been pulling it lately with the uh, McIntyre combination. He's he's really put himself out there. His matches have been high-quality matches. The angle Ziggler one we talked about. They need to get themselves away from the show again and let the talent continue moving forward. So, um, well, that being said, um, you were talking about Cody Rhodes losing his belt. I think there was something else with the Bucks, correct? Yeah. Uh, well, both of them. I mean, they were the six man tag teams, Ring of Honor. And this last week, they lose the belts to the Kingdom. Um, now, so not only does so you're, you're looking at Cody Rhodes, who's lost two titles in the last 45 days. Uh, the Bucks have lost two titles, two tag team titles in the last month and a half. Uh, first, they lost New Japan tag team titles um, to um, the Gorillas of Destiny. And now they lose the six man titles. And Cody only has a New Japan U.S. title. The Bucks have no titles. They've removed themselves from the Bullet Club and now going off into the Elite. Between them, uh, Marty, Scroll, uh, Hangman Page, Kenny Omega, 
uh, Kota Ibushi, that they're going off of the elite. They are no longer the Bullet Club. They have officially been removed from there. Uh, yes, they're still having some matches because they do have one coming up. Uh, I know Tama Tonga is fighting Kenny Page and kind of like a Bullet Club elite, story never ends kind of match. Um but it's going along the line, you know, their their contracts are expiring, all of them, with the exception of Scroll and Hangman Page. I'm pretty sure they have a contract for a little bit longer. But I know, you know, Bucks and Cody and, and Kenny, um, their title, their, their contracts are coming up pretty soon. Obviously, as long as he holds the belt, he'll be at, Kenny Omega will be fighting and defending the belt at Wrestle Kingdom 13 in January. Um, but it leads to wondering what's going to happen, what's going on with the Bucks and Cody, and where are they headed? Are they headed to the WWE? Are they headed to Impact? Are they headed to something different? Or is it a complete different swerve, and they're staying exactly where they are? Uh, there's no idea, and that's what's so intriguing about them because of how big they've become and, and what they are to the wrestling industry. But the fact that they're just dropping bouts like like nothing right now, they're just tossing them away, basically. Yeah, you tip. You don't see people get stripped from belts that much or that fast, without an underlying reason. So if this is storyline to make us wonder what's going on, hats yeah, off we don't, to them. No but, one wants to have another Alondra Blaze. They don't want to have that. That's the whole thing. You got a belt in your hands and your contract's about to expire. You either sign the contract or they strip your belt. Yep. That's when it comes down to it. So, and, um, unless rumors come out, we're not really, we're not going to really know what's going on, um, because the announcement's going to come New Year's Day. They're expire their contract expire New Year's night or New Year's Eve. So we have just oh, just under two months to find out what's going on. Uh, I can tell you right now, if Cody ends up losing his U.S. title pretty soon. There's there's going to be some big talks. They there obviously something big is about to happen for them. I don't think they're coming to WWE. I really hope they're not because I love those guys and what they do in the ring and what they can do storyline wise and who they are. I think the WWE is going to completely hinder what they are and who they can be. Um, of course, I would not love not not there. if they don't not if they don't get them on NXT. I would love to see the young Bucks and Cody Rose go against freaking. Uh, um, uh, what's that? Undisputed Era. Yeah, Undisputed Era. Adam Cole and Undisputed Era. That would be a phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. So we just talked a that. moment ago about how you don't bring a legend back like Rey Mysterio and put him on 205. You don't bring the hottest commodity in wrestling and put him on, on a development show. I, I, don't, I, I don't look at NXT as a development show. Yeah, I don't look at it either. Really, it, in theory, it, it is. really is. It is. Uh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. If there's rumors that NXT is about to become its own brand, yes. if that's the case and they are signing them to NXT and these, they're going to be the headliners of a new brand, that, that could be pretty big right there. NXT yeah, is going to be yeah. their own brand because they're and freaking carrying WWE to, to right now. To go with that, there's rumors right now that there may be some main roster being drafted to NXT. Um, obviously not like an AJ Styles and like that, more like Ty Dillinger and stuff like that. But yeah, um, Ty needs to get if, back there. If his they're roots making back. those moves, they might be doing what they can to round it out to make it a completely different brand on its own. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case, Hunter's behind that. They're going to be able to do what they want to do. If that's Absolutely. the case, then I would be behind that. Um, but if they're going to bring it back to NXT, and NXT is going to continue to be what it is right now. You're you're wasting your time with what these what this talent is out there. Yeah, no. yep. you you know with Hunter in control and with what Hunter's been able to do with them in Evolution, NXT is on the cusp of breaking out. Like they're they're about to go two hours. They're about to have their own show. We're gonna be talking about seeing wrestling every freaking night now, dude. That's what it's gonna come down to again. There was a time when we were almost at that point when. TNT uh, with TNA and freaking uh, WWE had four nights. We could watch wrestling four nights out of the week. Uh, we're going to get there again just on WWE alone because NXT is going to get their their own show. It's going to, I mean, and I'm not talking one hour. I'm talking two hours, weekly, live talent. That's what I, they, that's. I'm going to go right now. So I'm going to tell you right now, a year from now, we we will have wrestling five nights a week. We will have Raw Monday nights. We will have 
SmackDown on Fridays. We will have TNA on Thursdays, NXT on Wednesdays. And I guarantee you that Tuesday night spot, there's no reason for them not to have a women's channel, a women's show yep. on Tuesday nights. Yep. May Young Classic, man. I've said nothing but good things about it, and that's what it's doing. So, or well, or or you move you move when NXT has the R two Tuesday nights. You have NXT UK. Yeah, yeah. The NXT UK is going to take some time, man. I've watched. Uh, it well, I know, times. I know it is, but yeah. you know, who knows? Well, by frame, the time we're here, time time now, we end up having NXT, or we end up having Monday Night Raw becoming Tuesday Night Raw, and Monday Night Raw, which is the A show on Monday nights, becoming the Becky Lynch show. I, 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 <laughs> with guest star Tony Storm, that's what I'd go with right there. There you go. No, 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 um, no, no, no. The guest star is whoever the man wants to be. <laughs> the guest star that night. Hey, so uh, let's uh, let, let's button this up tonight. I think we I think we've done a good job recouping our fan base. By the way, we're hey, thanks for all those new Twitter followers, man. We're we're, we're pushing three hundred here, guys. Not bad for the first year show coming up pretty soon. Uh, but let's, uh, let's, uh, outside of the cast on what you see on the screen here, my freak, can these guys follow you anywhere else? Uh, well, apart from the Twitter at my freak MLG, there's my right. plug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can find her, uh, probably on Twitch at twitch.tv slash BT by freak, uh, a lot of gaming action, all that stuff. Um, coming to you there live um, and in the process of working on my new YouTube channel, which is coming soon. Uh, Mind Freak. Or, excuse me, Mind Freak. Uh, Bearded yes. Master. <laughs> uh, you can find me all week long, uh, Bearded Master, A Bearded Master, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Boots to the Face. Um, all wrestling, all the time. Um, got some, Got some cool, interesting wrestling stuff coming your way. Uh, so if you're in- interested in that and want to see the topics that are being posted, uh, come out, join it, see what's going on. Um, we're going to start doing some polls and listed lists pretty soon, top matches, wrestling like that. Um, so just trying to get that build up that the wrestling community. We have a strong community out there. We're you know that's the awesome thing about wrestling is that we're all here as one. Uh, we're not trying to take each other out. Um, we're all here to help each other. That's why we have our follow our follow Fridays and. We're throwing, sharing everyone else's names. So we're doing this because every, there, there's so much wrestling out there. There's so much content that you can never get enough of it. So that's why we're all here. So follow Bearded Master, uh, Boots to the Face, uh, and, and let's, let's get get this going. Let's get this, this community building up bigger and better and get more wrestling conversations out there. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we might have like a little cross show there sometime. You know what I'm saying? Can't forget when wrestling Wednesdays though too. Come on now, don't forget that. You, know? yeah, you got that. That's right. Yeah. So of course you can follow me at Masonic Vader, and like I always like to try to say, this is the show I really want you to follow the most. This has been uh, very fun for me to host, and I miss the weeks that we're not here. So I'm glad we we're able to pop one in next week. We're going to be talking about Survivor Series, uh, getting our cat. Uh, we'll get our votes in. We got to start catching uh, up on some of the. Yeah, we gotta start catching up on some of these bets. Who won the last show, by the way? Who was the final winner? I've won the last two, just so we know, just so we're clear. <laughs> and yeah. and just so we know, just so you know, uh, after the last show, I was only two picks behind you, and since you lost all but two this last time, I'm pretty sure I bumped back up to first place on the year. So I'm yeah, just, I'm just it, 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 because he only won, you know. Only got two matches. I mean, I'm I'm number two now. Myself, yes, you are number you, two. I don't I don't think he is because he was he was pretty far back before the last two events. Well, um, you know, what? regardless if he is, yes, you are number two. I <laughs> big stinky pile of number two. All right? I will get these tallied up and I will get these posted for the year totals coming into Survivor. Hey, I have a post in for Survivor Series. I, I will say this. I may, I may be number two, but at least I didn't pick Brock Lesnar to win a crown jewel. If you would have hey, picked Brock Lesnar, that would have been a win. Yeah, I, 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 I know, I know, but the, the fact that you picked Brock and you're pissed off, <laughs> just like the IRS is the... Shame. Shame. Can we get the, the around the horn <laughs> freeze frame right now and just freeze yeah. him out? Yeah, yeah, please. Isn't that – it's not working, damn it. Not working. Anyways, all right. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for checking out our show. Make sure you leave comments. 
Make sure you check us out tomorrow night on Malice-Corp on Twitch at 8 p.m. Uh, I'll be on there with a couple of our other friends going out. Uh, we thank you for the show. We'll see We'll see you guys next week. And like we always, always like to end the show, give us the one, two, three. Our producer's done. So done. Go to bed. The time is We're back in.